What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. Today, Janine Garofalo reads the story of Jessica, a little girl who can only be seen by Ruthie. She ate with Ruthie? Careful, Jessica, it's hot. Then, the story of little Tommy Brown and his scary problem. The spaceship neared Earth, and the monster found out where Tommy lived. And Buddy may have big ears, but that doesn't mean he listens. Somehow, Buddy's mind was always wandering too far away from those beautiful ears. His parents tried yelling, listen, Buddy! They tried whispering, listen, Buddy! Nothing worked. Story time is made possible by Bill Grant and Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. And now we're even. You're getting better at checkers, Kino. <laughs> yeah, thanks to those little moves you taught me. I only show them to you because you're my buddy. <laughs> Gee, thanks. And I'm glad you're my buddy, Kino. I didn't have a lot of friends until I met you. You did? Nope. Well, why? Because we just moved here and I didn't know anyone. Oh. Well, who did you play with? I played by myself. And I had a pretend friend. I pretended I had a brother, and his name was Bobby. Oh, like in the book, huh? Which book? This great book about a girl with a pretend friend. Oh. Uh -huh. Maybe Lucy will read it to us. Yeah, or Janine. OK, well, let's go. Come on. All right. That looks great. I'm glad you like it. What are you guys up to? Oh, we're just playing checkers. And now we're wondering if you could read Jessica. Remember that book, Lucy? Oh, yes, I remember it. Um, well, yeah, I guess we've got time for one story, but then we've got to go. Where are you going? Oh, never mind. I don't want to even think about it. Sorry, it, it's just that... It's OK, that... Kino. Would you like to read it, Janine? Yes, I would. Thank you. <laughs> Jessica by Kevin Henkes. Ruthie Sims didn't have a dog. She didn't have a cat or a brother or a sister. But Jessica was the next best thing. Hold on tight, Jessica. Good jump, Jessica. We're almost there, Jessica. Jessica is my best friend. Jessica went wherever Ruthie went. My toes are cold too, Jessica. To the moon. To the playground. Not too high, Jessica. To Ruthie's grandma's for the weekend. Jessica's not ready yet. Jessica, said Ruthie's parents. But there was. She ate with Ruthie. Careful, Jessica, it's hot. Looked at books with Ruthie. Once upon a time, Jessica. And took turns stacking blocks with Ruthie, building towers. If Ruthie was mad, so was Jessica. If Ruthie was sad, Jessica was too. And if Ruthie was glad, Jessica felt exactly the same. When Ruthie accidentally spilled some juice, she said, uh, Jessica did it, and 
She's sorry. When Ruthie's parents called a babysitter because they wanted to go out to a movie one night, Ruthie said, Jessica has a stomachache and wants you to stay home. And when Ruthie turned five, it was Jessica's fifth birthday, too. We're five. There is no Jessica, <laughs> said Ruthie's parents. But there was. She went to bed with Ruthie. Sleep tight, Jessica. She got up with Ruthie. Rise and shine, Jessica. And she stayed with Ruthie all the while in between. Ready or not, here I come, Jessica. One night before the first day of kindergarten, Ruthie's mother said, I think Jessica should stay home tomorrow. Ruthie's father said, Um, uh, you'll meet a lot of nice children. You can make new friends. But Jessica went anyway. Come on, Jessica, it will be okay. Jessica wanted to go home so badly that Ruthie had to hold her hands and whisper to her. When the teacher announced everyone's name, Ruthie and Jessica weren't listening. Jessica crawled through a tunnel with Ruthie. Don't get lost, Jessica. She took a nap with Ruthie. I can't sleep either, Jessica. And she shared Ruthie's paintbrush during art. When all the children lined up two by two to march to the laboratory, Jessica was right next to Ruthie. A girl came up to Ruthie and stood by her side. Um, can I be your partner? She asked. Ruthie didn't know what to say. Mm, my name is Jessica, said the girl. It is, said Ruthie. The girl nodded. Mine's Ruthie, said Ruthie, smiling. And they walked down the hallway, hand in hand. Ruthie Sims didn't have a dog. She didn't have a cat, or a brother, or a sister. But Jessica was even better. Remind me of Bobby, my pretend brother. Mm. You know, you're not even listening to me. What's the matter? I have to go to the dentist, that's what. I've been to the dentist before. I always think it's gonna hurt. It hasn't yet, but you never know. Sitting there with your mouth wide open, anything could happen. When do you have to go? Now. I'm taking him for his checkup because his mom is at work. Mm. Okay, I have an idea. Why don't you go with Kino and I'll stay here? Hey, wait a minute. I got a great idea, Lucy. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can go some other time. No, the appointment is for today. But tell you what, why don't we take a book with us and we'll read it while we're waiting? It'll be okay, Kino. You'll see. Mm. I'd rather go some other time, Lucy. Do we really have to go now? Hope you didn't forget that book. You didn't, did you? I'm not ready yet, Lucy. I need to get ready. He's a little scared, but he'll be all right. <sighs> the waiting is the part I hate the most. Oh, it'll only be a minute, Kino. Why don't we read this book in the meantime? I'm coming to get you. <laughs> Looks fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm coming.
came to get you at the dentist's office? Oh, oh brother, I don't know if this is such a good idea. Well, hold on a minute, Kino, and you'll see why we're reading it. It's by Tony Ross, and he wrote it for his three-year-old daughter to show her that monsters aren't scary. Okay? All right. Yeah. Here we go. I'm coming to get you. Deep in another galaxy, a spaceship rushed toward a tiny, peaceful planet. It landed, and out jumped a loathsome monster. I'm coming to get you, <laughs> it howled. The monster crushed all the gentle banana people. <laughs> banana people. smashed their statues and scattered their books. It chewed up the mountains and drank the oceans. It had the jellyfish for dessert. <laughs> Jellyfish, you mean. <laughs> it gobbled up the whole planet, except for the middle, which was too hot, and the ends, which were too cold. Still hungry, the monster flew off in his spaceship, nibbling small stars along the way. He had seen a pretty blue planet called Earth. The monster found little Tommy Brown on its radar. I'm coming to get you, it roared. It was bedtime, and Tommy was listening to a story all about scary monsters. The spaceship neared Earth, and the monster found out where Tommy lived. It circled the town, looking for the right house. As Tommy crept up to bed, he checked every stair for monsters. He looked in every place they could hide. Once, he thought he heard a bump outside his window. The monster hid behind a rock and waited for dawn. <laughs> In the daylight, Tommy felt silly for having been so scared of monsters. Then, with a terrible roar, the monster pounced. But Tommy just walked right by. Tommy need to be afraid? Well, no, but that mean monster was smaller than Tommy's shoe. Maybe Tommy didn't even notice him because he was so small. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be worried either, Kino. Well, just keep saying to yourself, checkups don't hurt. You know checkups don't hurt. 
So keep saying it to yourself, and it'll help you be brave. I don't know if that'll work. Mr. Kino, please. Mr. Kino? That sounded like a terrible roar to me. <laughs> I think Dr. Smiley's ready for you, Kino. Oh, yeah? But I'm not ready. Remember, repeat to yourself. Checkups don't hurt. Yeah, I'll just keep saying it. Checkups don't hurt. I am brave. I am. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, I was brave, and the checkup didn't hurt. And I'm happy because I was brave. And now I'm looking for a book, except I can't remember what it's called. Hey, Lucy, what was the name of that book about the rabbit who doesn't listen to his folks and ends up in a heap of trouble? Listen, buddy. I am listening. What's it called? That's what it's called. Listen, buddy. Oh, right. <laughs> I thought she was telling me to listen. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, here it is. <sighs> oh, yes. He was really brave at the dentist's office. Dr. Smiley even gave him a new toothbrush. That's so great. He was so scared. Hmm? I thought you were calling me, buddy. That's why I got confused. Oh. <laughs> Did you want me to read this book? Oh, yeah, because after we came back from the dentist, I was thinking that I should have listened to what everybody was telling me. The checkups don't hurt and stuff. Well, buddy, now you know for next time. Not to worry so much. <laughs> so, what about this book you brought? Well, in this story, the bunny rabbit has huge ears but doesn't listen. I have a friend like that. Not me, right? I may have big ears, but I listen most of the time. No, not you, buddy. This is Listen, Buddy by Helen Lester, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. Okay. Buddy's father had a beautiful big nose. He was a great sniffer. <laughs> Buddy's mother had beautiful big teeth. She was a great chomper. Buddy had beautiful big ears. It didn't matter. When Buddy's parents sent him to the vegetable stand to get a basket of squash, he came home with a basket of wash. <laughs> when they asked him to buy 15 tomatoes, he came home with 50 potatoes. Buddy's father said, Listen, Buddy, will you please bring me a pen? Who? asked Buddy. You, said his father. Will you please bring me a pen? A what? asked Buddy. <laughs> a pen, said his father. <laughs> will you please bring me a pen? <laughs> sure, said Buddy. <laughs> Buddy's father said, listen, Buddy. <laughs> Buddy's mother said, listen, Buddy, will you please get me a slice of bread? Who? asked Buddy. You, said his mother. Will you please give me a slice of bread? A what? A what? asked Buddy. A slice of bread, said his mother. Will you please bring me a slice of bread? Sure, said Buddy. <laughs> Buddy's mother said, listen, Buddy. Somehow Buddy's mind was always wandering too far away from those beautiful ears. His parents tried yelling, listen, Buddy. They tried whispering, listen, Buddy. Nothing worked. One day, Buddy got permission to go for a long hop. He had never before been allowed to go beyond the vegetable stand. Listen, Buddy, his parents warned him. Just remember that at the end of the road, there are two paths. The path to the left will lead you around the pond and back home. 
but the path to the right will lead you to the cave of the scruffy varmint. And that scruffy varmint has a nasty temper. So be sure to take the path to the left. Right? Asked Buddy. Left, said his parents. Right, said Buddy. And with a salute of his paw, he hopped away. Feeling very grown up, Buddy hopped along past the vegetable stand and on to the end of the road. Uh, now, let's see, he pondered. Was I supposed to go left or right? Or right or left? He thought as hard as he could. The last thing I said was right, so that must be right. Right he went. Twenty-five hops later, Buddy discovered that right was wrong. There in front of his cave was the scruffy varmint doing scruffy things that varmints do, like snarling, mussing his hair, rubbing dirt on his knees, and scratching a whole lot of itches. At his feet was a large soup pot. What are you going to do with that soup pot? asked Buddy. What does one usually do with a soup pot? Bake pie, replied Scruffy Varmint, not too kindly. I'm gonna make some soup. <laughs> some what? asked Buddy. Soup, snarled the Scruffy Varmint. Buddy had forgotten his parents' warning about the Scruffy Varmint. He asked eagerly, may I help? The Scruffy Varmint was not fond of having company, but with help, he'd have his soup sooner. So he said, all right, Bunny Rabbit, come help me gather firewood. Who? What? Asked Buddy. <laughs> you! Firewood! Buddy eagerly hopped ahead of the scruffy varmint. Very gently, he gathered a large prickly bundle, which he held out proudly. Roughly, the varmint grabbed the bundle. Oh! I said firewood, not briarwood, he yelped, plucking the sharp thorns from his paws. Later, when the pot was filled with water, the scruffy varmint lay against a rock, licking his paws and barking orders. Hustle! Bunny rabbit, get the flower! Yes, sir, said Buddy. <laughs> Yes, sir, said Buddy. Fifteen tomatoes! Yes, sir, said Buddy. And a big load of squash. Yes, sir, said Buddy. Varmint rose and gave the soup a stir. He took a taste. It tasted a little like, well, a little, maybe it needed some pepper. Bunny rabbit, get the pepper from the left side of the kitchen sink, the varmint growled. Who get the what from the where side of the where what? Asked Buddy. <laughs> The scruffy varmint repeated, Who get the what from the where side of the where what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> he stalked into the kitchen and got the pepper himself and sprinkled it into the soup. There, he snarled. Now, bunny rabbit, put the soup on the fire. Buddy put the soup in the fire. <laughs> The fire went 
so did the scruffy varmint. I'll teach you, he howled. I will have soup. Bunny rabbit soup. And I know just the bunny to use. The bunny rabbit who never listens. Buddy listened. He also hopped very, very, very fast. Faster than he had ever hopped in his life. He whizzed up the road, past the vegetable stand, and into the safety of his house. And a little later, when Buddy's parents asked him to bring a pen and a slice of bread, Buddy listened. decide if that bunny was brave or not. What do you think, John? I think so, because he wasn't scared of the wolf. That bunny was such a goof. He didn't even know he should be scared of the wolf. Yeah, you're right. He was a bunny goof. He wasn't even listening when they told him Scuffy Vermin had a nasty temper. Mm -hmm. He could hear. He just didn't listen. <laughs> that was really a funny book. I liked it when he says, who get the what from the where side of the where or what? <laughs> yeah, that's right before the wolf got really mad. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Well, that's one bunny that'll listen to his parents from now on. Well, once a bunny goof, always a bunny goof. Hey, let's go play some more checkers, John. Oh, but wait. I brought these books for story picks. Oh, OK, let's see them. This one's called Custard the Dragon and the Wicked Knight. And it's about a scared dragon and his buddy, the princess. Oh, good. What's the other one? Lucy has it. Yes, oh. here it is. It's called Rebel, and it's about a little duck who doesn't listen to his mother and almost gets into a whole lot of trouble. Well, that sounds like Listen Buddy. That's right. Yeah. Well, we have to go now. Janine, thank you so much for coming to visit. Oh, it's my yeah. pleasure. I hope you'll come again. And until then, keep, keep a story, story in your heart. heart. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Storytime books are Jessica by Kevin Henkes, I'm Coming to Get You by Tony Ross, Listen Buddy by Helen Lester, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger, Custard the Dragon and the Wicked Knight by Ogden Nash, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger, and Rebel by John Schoner. You can find these and other books at your local library. Story time is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Story time is a production of KCET Los Angeles.